what is going on youtube and welcome back to another edition of top down market analysis with me t hobbs welcome to the trader shop please make sure you tip the barbers aka hit the like and subscribe button turn the notification bells on so you get notified every time we go live and or put out a video um thank you guys so much for helping us get close to 1300 subs i think we're at 1200 and some change at the time of this recording today's date is sunday april 28th 2024 year of our lord hope you guys had an amazing weekend um and i hope you are prepared for the volatile week that we have coming up and i'm going to get into all of that but as you know we start with the monthly time frame on the nasdaq as well as the es i like to look at them side by side we break price down from the monthly the weekly the daily and then we go down to about the four hour chart and any further analysis i like to share only with the discord but hey if you are paying attention to what i'm doing you should have enough information to get prepared for the following week in regards to our predictions from last week we talked about being extremely bullish down here after a six percent six percent sell-off we definitely anticipated a nice rally back to the upside potentially going back up to retest eighteen thousand on the nasdaq well that prediction played out pretty well and again i'm not here to toot my horn i'm just here to give you a little bit of a review of what happened that being said let's jump into what we expect to see next week so if we look over here to the left and right of my screen we have the nasdaq on the left and we'll start there and we'll break them down simultaneously right so the cup and handle from heaven is what i've been calling this thing for like the last six months since october september time frame was the low since october of 2023 We've done nothing but continuously rally on both instruments on ES and NQ after putting in this beautiful cup and handle, three months of selling in preparation for an one, two, three, four, five straight months of buying. And now we're entering into the last, the sixth month, two days and four hours remaining in this month for it to turn green or be our first red month since October. Now, there is a lot of catalysts over the next couple of days that could potentially turn this month, month this month green, but there are a lot of catalysts, catalysts that are coming up this week that could also turn this month and the following month very red. So let's just analyze the price action and we'll go from there, all right? If we're looking at this, we talked about last week, this doji candle being the first of its kind in route to this, in route to the potential end of this uptrend. I talked about this doji candle on NQ being that of a beginning of an evening star pattern. When you get a doji candle at the top of an uptrend, especially one that's this small, you can kind of anticipate a sell-off, right? And which is kind of what we got. Now, the question is, will we get any more continuation? That's gonna be the big question that we have. Will this trend finally break down, right? or are we going to go back up to test even higher prices right i have my prediction i have my ideas and you if you stick around to the video you'll hear all of that same thing over here on es the cup and handle from heaven very very bullish very very bearish candle to start the month but now we're rolling into the end of the month we got google earnings that came in microsoft earnings that came in meta earnings that came in then we had all of the the fundamentals that came in in regards to a new standpoint that really pushed this market right back up, right? We're right back above 5,100 on ES after briefly breaking below the 5,000 range only to recover and push back up to potentially retest those 5,300 area, 5,200 and 5,300 area and potentially put in that new all-time high. All right, so let's drop down to the weekly time frame and start to analyze both charts on the weekly. If we come over here to the weekly, we can see that we're still holding this beautiful uptrend, right? In NQ and ES are very, very similar, but they're also very different. They're very similar in the fact that they both are holding a very nice uptrend, right? But ES is showing way more strength, right, than NQ. And I'll show you kind of what I mean by that as we continue. So if we look, we got this aggressive sell side candle they came in this was the day this was the week april 15th where the market dumped about six percent but look where it dumped to ladies and gentlemen we dumped right into a weekly demand zone fair value gap 
premium, I mean, discounted price, whatever you want to call it. This area is where a lot of buyers came into the market. This is also the area that I talked about was 50% of NVIDIA's earnings. I believe that came in like February 21st, something around there. We just slightly dropped below that. And then we came right to where we where all of this buying started. If you think about it, we're right back to the beginning of the year pricing, right? January pricing, we're about 50% in that area. So now the market has a decision to make. Are we willing to continue to buy and push price back above the all time high? Or will these buyers are strong? Are these buyers only strong enough to push us back for a retest of all of this consolidation right here? Right. This week is going to be very key for me to decide whether this market is truly turning bearish or is this market just pulling back to go higher? Signs of that are going to be we need to get back above this consolidation and basically put it in a new all time high. What you don't want to see from a Fibonacci standpoint is you don't want to see the previous high and previous low fail, right? You don't want to see this fail up here. Meaning if we tap into 3, 18,355, 18,288, somewhere along these lines, you want to see buyers continue to buy above that price. You don't want to see them stall out up here and then start to reject because this is going to be a massive dump back down because at that point, we're going to be moving to take out 17,107. And we're going to be moving to take out 16,595. That being said, let's go over here to ES and I'll show you while, why strength wise, they're a little bit different. And ES may be again leading the way in regards to strength. I'm going to focus on this area right here because as you can see, January 2nd through about January 8th on the weekly time frame, they're both have a, they both have a huge demand zone in this area. However, if we look over on NQ, we can see that NQ tapped into 50% of this weekly demand back from January. But in that same time frame, the sellers on the SPY, ES, were unable to break down below February's price. They found buyers a lot sooner as opposed to NQ dropping all the way down to this area right here. Now I have my thesis as to why that is. NQ is much more tech heavy than S&P. The S&P has the banks, the banks had earnings, as well as the tech, tech sector had earnings. NVIDIA cannot withstand the tech sector selling off because it doesn't have anything else to hold it up. Therefore, if the tech sector sells off, NVIDIA's, I mean, NQ is going to sell off just as strong as NVIDIA sells off. And we go back and look at NVIDIA, it definitely dumped. It's going to sell off much stronger as opposed to ES having the banks to kind of prop it up it doesn't have to sell off as far or it takes a lot more selling pressure to sell off as far so that's the breakdown of the weekly let's drop down to the daily and take a look at both charts so as we come down to the daily time frame you can see that there's something very 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 important that you need to pay attention to here from a structural standpoint right now as you can see the uptrend is still intact however it has taken a little bit of a break we broke below 51.73. We broke below 18,000 on NQ. Therefore, this side of the price, like don't look at the left side. Just look at what's happening right in front of you, right? If you just look at what's happening right in front of you, this is still bearish character with bullish intent. Meaning this track down is very bearish. We change character. Usually when we change character, we come back up to retest 50% of the previous low and the previous high, hence this red line here, that brought us to the downside. And or we come back up to sweep the high one more time, right, before trading lower. There's multiple reasons to be very bearish, right, when we come up to the high, depending on what we can do. But there's also, if we just zoom in a little further, there's multiple reasons to be very bullish. You can see that down here, we put that opposite candle that I showed you on the weekly, a doji at the end of a selling, uh, a sell off is an indication of a potential morning star pattern. Well, we put a morning star pattern in, a bullish engulfing, another doji, we came back down and retested these lows. This is the key right here. Retesting of these lows and finding more, enough buyers to get above that high is an indication that these sellers do not want to go or these buyers want to defend this area and they are willing to buy much higher now 
the area that they need to get above is going to be 17,990 because this is where the selling from April 16th originated. If you remember on the weekly, April 15th, April 16th was the week that we dropped 6%. That's why this area is going to be very important for us to get back above. More importantly is going to be this consolidation area right here that we need to break above because we consolidated here for I think like two, maybe three months. So this is going to be very important. Over on ES, it looks very similar. We got the break, above, break below 51.68. Then to the bullish side, we didn't have that quite the same doji candle, but we did have the same retest and then buyers selling or buyers pushing above. And then this supply zone right here, in comparison on NQ, we're already above this supply zone on ES, which again shows the strength of ES over the strength of NQ but also could be an indication that the market is ready to move higher. How high we get is going to be completely, in my opinion, is going to be completely dependent on the fundamentals that I'm going to break down once we get through the four hour. So as we come down to the four hour chart, I'll go ahead and turn on some of my indicators, not indicators, but basically the way that I'm viewing the market this week, um, it's going to get a little bit more crowded here on the chart. So just bear with me. As I turn these on and boop, there we go. Okay. So as we blow up in Q, because I'm going to go through them individually, because now we're a little bit closer to price, right? I'm going to break down some of the levels that I'm looking for. So <clears throat> the first level that I'm looking for is we're obviously in this uptrend, looking for price to pull back into 17, 785 on Monday. I just want to see if we can come back down and retest the low that brought us here, right? We tap back into 17,785. We find buyers. I'm looking for price to then go back and finally take out 18,000, making our way back up to 18,261, taking out this particular potential structure that we talked about here. This is going to be the bulk of the structure right here. This area right here is where you're going to see the most games being played, so to speak, right? So as we start to come back up to this supply zone, meaning we get above 18,000 and we make that push into 18,260. This area is where we spent the most time consolidating. We had these crazy candles. These sellers are gonna be very interested, in my opinion, of defending their position, right? So I think that it also could be warranted, right? It would definitely be warranted for price to pull back even further with the anticipation of taking out all of these buyers, all of these sellers up here. So if we can't hold 17,785, 17, then I'm looking for a push back into 17,668. And then finally, a push into 568 or all the way back down to 431.50. The reason for that is because the market is like a slingshot. And when it wants to go higher, it needs to pull all the way back if it's going to plan on taking out all of these highs up here. Now, if the buyers are strong enough with the catalyst that we have coming upcoming, again, I'll go over those here in a second, then I don't think we need to pull back as far. We can just start to find new buyers above supply. All right, so let's jump over to ES. And you're going to see the similar scenario here. Again, ES just being a little bit more strong. We're already above that previous high. We could come back down and retest the daily at 51.2575. I don't see ES coming all the way back below 5104, but you just never know because this week, again, very volatile. We'll be going over a lot of the new stuff that's coming up this week. But in the event that we do, if we break through 5104, I can see us dropping all the way back down to 5050. <laughs> this level was very important for me last week. I remember playing ES and talking about the 5050 level and how much I hated it. But now it's become its own little demand zone on the two hour time frame. So I would love to see price return back to this area, find buyers, and then push, make that final push back into 5189 before again coming back into that strength, right? That we saw on NQ. The same area here on NQ is the same area on ES that will cause problems. That's gonna sit above 5189.50, and the resistance will start anywhere between 5200 and all time highs, right? This is again a very, very significant area. And I'll be making more supply zones uh, aware to the Discord as we start to trade further into the week. All right, so now that we understand where we wanna trade, what we wanna do in regards to the top-down analysis, 
let's look at some of the fundamentals that are bringing my thesis this week so we'll start with earnings right monday um not many crazy earnings on monday i believe it's 158 or 185 of the s p 500 stocks that will be reporting just just this week alone so it's going to be a crazy day in the market already but the big ones you really want to pay attention to is that of tuesday and thursday why because amazon is going to be reporting after close on thursday along with amd which is absolutely going to make this market make a decision if you guys were paying attention to the earnings as of last week that we talked about Google, Microsoft, I told you they would be absolutely huge. Meta, absolutely huge. Meta actually had great earnings and the market dumped. Why? Because we found out why the next day when Google reported and guess what their keyword was? AI, 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 right? And if you remember, I said that this was an AI bubble. When they stopped talking about AI, the bubble would burst. But the minute they start talking up AI from the largest companies in the space, this market's going to absolutely sin. That's what happened to Google. They broke above their all time high by about $30. They actually kind of shit on the rest of the companies. They were like, well, Meta has been working on the metaverse. We've been working on AI and we since 2016. Anyway, bottom line is, is if Amazon comes out and says anything relatable to AI, AMD says anything relatable to AI, AMD, I mean to AI, remember AMD is very relatable to the largest, most popular stock in the stock market right now. It's not the largest, but it's most popular and that's Nvidia. So people are gonna be watching AMD very closely in regards to their earnings and their guidance because it's going to give them a clue of what nvidia is going to do in the next 24 days which is when they report as we switch over to wednesday we got qualcomm always a big one right then thursday apple coinbase crypto is going to be going crazy over this right apple is one of the most prized possessions in the market it's been the largest stock in the market for a very long time right almost a decade it's been taken over recently by Microsoft, but they're still going back and forth in market cap, right? So whatever Mike, whatever Apple has to say in regards to their earnings, you best believe this is gonna be a market mover. So fundamentally, just in regards to earnings, we have a huge volatile week ahead of us, but that even that isn't even the start of the volatile volatility that's gonna be coming into this market. If we jump over to Forex, right? Forex factory, right? On Monday, we got a pretty, pretty chill day. No red news, no red folder news whatsoever, right? We go into Tuesday, employment cost index, S&P composite, consumers confidence, all those are big, right? But then what do we got on Wednesday? The big dog comes out. Federal fund rate comes out, FOMC statement comes out, and then we see Mr. Purple Tie himself, Purple Tie himself, Jerome Powell coming across the stage on Wednesday. So plant your pearls, Get ready for this market to dump, pump, sideways. It's going to do everything on that day, right? Because whatever he has to say in that press conference is going to move this market. You can bet your bottom dollar. Not to mention, as we continue, like I said, on Thursday, we're going to have Apple earnings after hours, but we have unemployment claims. Pre like It's just so many things going on this week, right? We end the week with non-farm employment change and unemployment rate. Like It's going to be a crazy week all over again. If you think we're getting a break anytime soon, we will get one week of break the after May, the second week in May. But then right after that, we got CPI, NVIDIA earnings, all type of things coming up. So I expect a lot of volatility these last two months. And if you guys understand anything in regards to the stock market, you know that May, June and July are usually when the market starts to pull back. And it would not surprise me between the FOMC meeting and the CPI data you know that this market gets one more rip because my thesis is, is that we come down we sweep the low right and i'll just kind of give you that as we're getting ready to get up out of here but this is my overall thesis on the weekly right or on the daily right if we're looking at this as a potential shift in structure well before we shift structure we usually come up and sweep the high one more time this is a change of character i would expect a very bullish day in like the next i don't know couple months to take us super high and then just get pounded back to the downside unless this is just a simple pullback 
and we're gonna continue to go higher but the way i'm looking at this this is definitely a change of character i definitely got my eyes set on bullish activity for now i want to see how we react here and how we react in the event we stick our head back above the all-time high now that's all i got here today please make sure you do us a favor if you're using prop firms which a lot of you are down below you'll see the apex code um, the Apex funded code, if you want to use that code, you can, it'll help support the channel. In addition to that, my partner, Justin makes a lot of videos for the channel. He puts other discount codes for other prop firms, such as my funded futures, take profit, top step apex and others, right? If you want to support the channel, you can do that, but you can also join the discord It's $15 per week and it is $30 or I'm sorry, $40 per month. Don't let me miss speak. I ain't even, you know, discount. I'm just kidding. But it's $40 per month and it's $15 a week. You can join if you want a strong community. You want educational videos put out every single day, things that I don't place on YouTube. Complete access to myself and Justin pretty much anytime you need it. Um, or you just wanna support the channel. Those are ways that you can do so. I always say that at the beginning, I always say it at the end. Other than that, I want you guys to have an amazing day and have a wonderful week of trading. I'll catch you guys on the next one. My name is T. Hobbs. This is The Trader Shop, and we out. Peace.